welcome back. Following on from the last episode where we completed the forks, which was really good. One thing I did forget to actually say in that video. The manual actually recommends that you use a Kawasaki tool to basically put down the stanchion to uh, the actual damper rod inside will twist. So they advise you to use this Kawasaki tool that basically is like a T-bar, almost like a big socket T-bar that goes down inside, fits in the hole, and you can push that so you can actually turn the nut. So the tool's not available anymore, unfortunately. Two ways you can go around it. One way I did, and I omitted it from the video, which I forgot to do, was I actually used a small socket with extension bars and a ratchet on the top and held it that way. The other way they actually say in the manual is you can use a piece of dowel and taper the end push it down to hold that damper rod in place and then you can tighten up the nut at the bottom. So apologies for admitting that that part I didn't realise uh, until I became well until I basically edited started editing the video and I realised that section wasn't in there so this this bit will basically go into well give you the information for the other video. But this week moving on Again, it's still far too cold in here for paint. I'm having to delay and get other jobs done. There are plenty of other jobs to do. So as I seem to be concentrating on more on the front wheel, uh, front wheel, front end forks, I'd like to get the front end built so I can true the wheel up. I say I've got two options. I've got the axle stand version and actually put the front end in and true it in the actual front end of the bike. But this week, I've already printed off the feature pages. So we've got the front brake caliper, front disc. It's all separated up so you can see. And the actual master cylinder with brake lines. Obviously the brake lines that came out of it have had it. They're being replaced. So that will be the job for probably the next, this episode and probably the next episode. This is the state of the caliper. It's in quite a sorry state. It's seized. And also the actual master cylinder. Again, that won't move, that is tight. That's a remainder of the braided hose that was in there, that needs to come out. So this needs all to be cleaned up, stripped down. I'm actually going to run parts of this actually through the ultrasonic cleaner. So the cleaner's heating up. I'm going to strip down what I can and plonk them in and see if that will actually loosen up some of these parts. The disc also needs to be cleaned up. But I'm going to start on the actual caliper. So I'm going to soak these in penetrating fluid, see if I can release the pads that are in there. That is in there solid, that's the bleed nipple. Actually no, sorry that's not the bleed nipple, that is the brake line. Bleed nipple, that's solid. So that's the first job, soak these in penetrating fluid, see what we can get off and then move them into the cleaner. Alright so this has been soaking, I've pen put penetrating fluid on these bolts here, screw and also these two bolts here. So I'm actually using a 14 socket screwdriver a 14 spanner. So the problem is you can't 
can't actually get a socket on because they're so close. So first job, let's try the, the screw first. Hopefully it should be okay. Yep, that's coming. Again, as usual, I'm going to lay all the parts out as they come out. That's the state of one of the pads. Cap. Again, that'll be cleaned up. So that seems to be held in by the bracket. So let's try these. <sighs> oh, a bit more penetrating fluid. So I'll let that soak in for a bit longer. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty nasty. I'll stick that in the cleaner. Same with the screw. I say the pads. They'll be replaced. All right, that's had about another five minutes. in there as well. By the looks of the by the looks of the diagram, these are the two bolts that are fitting through here. So they're only threaded on the end. So in other, in theory, I should be able to just put the nuts on the back and just tap through lightly, so I can actually get them out. Starting to go. Bit of a state, but we'll clean that one up. All right, now the same for the other side. That one's starting to come.
Right. There we go. And the bracket is actually starting to free up. That's the second bolt. That's the piston boot. Right, there's the other caliper, uh, the other pad. Show you how I did that. So literally, after you've removed the bolts that hold in the main bracket, just literally slide, and out it comes. You've got two boots each side; they need to come off. Next job, we need to remove this piston. That's one of the rubber boots that just fell apart. In fact, the other one, there isn't one. Again, that rubber boot's just falling apart. So that's the state of the boots. We only have three. All right, let's try and get the bleed nipple out. So that's our favorite 10 mil. Rather nasty. Right, the one is going to be can I actually get this out? I don't know if I'll be able to get a socket on this top bit because that bottom bit's not moving. So stay at that. That's been thrown. Alright, so what's left to do is pull this piston out. So I'll grab the puller, see if I can get that out, and then that will go into the ultrasonic cleaner. Alright, so brake piston pullers kits out. If you haven't got one of these, I advise go get one, they are brilliant. Right, and that is a 28. That seems to be the right size. Yep.
I'll try and do this where you can see it, but it's a bit difficult. It's actually moving. There we go. An extremely disgusting brake pistol. Yeah, if you can see inside. There you go. That needs to be cleaned out. Right, so that's the disassembled uh, brake caliper, as you can see in a real sorry state. That is going to be replaced, they are going to be replaced. That is the end of the brake caliper, I'm using uh, normal banjo bolts and I've got replacement lines. The bolts, the washers, maybe the nuts I can save, the base plate, the back plate. That seal's no good. Them seals are no good. Bleed nipple, again, probably replace. So, literally, all I need to salvage is these parts. The ultrasonic cleaner's nicely warmed up, so I'm going to chuck them in there for about 15 minutes. Alright, so that's all loaded up. Obviously, the only bits I can't put in at the moment, I need to put a little dish in there for them. But the main bolts, the backing plate that holds the one of the pads in, uh, the main bracket and the whole caliper body are ready to go in. So about 15 minutes. Right, so that's just finished. Uh, I actually gave it 25 minutes in the end. I'll get the camera too close because it steams up. It's quite good, it's taken a lot off. Hopefully it's cleaned it up really well. Next thing I need to do is transfer this into a bucket of cold water and just give it a brush down. Do one part at a time. See the paint's coming off nicely. A little bit more to do. I'm going to get all these parts cleaned up. Dry them off and I'll stick them on the bench. Right, there you go. Bolts have come up nice. So I gave them a wipe down with a scotch brite and then lightly under the wire wheel on the bench grinder. The actual backing plate, not too bad. I still need to go in a little bit further, but that will be painted anyway. The actual bracket is starting to come up. Again, that was scotch bright and lightly just on the edges just to take a lot of the rust off. So a little bit more on that. Caliper has come out really well. Again, that's exactly the same. It's scotch bright and literally just lightly 
on the edges. There's still, you can see there's still a few bits in there. The centre bit, obviously I can't get in there. That's I've done it with Scotch Bright, but that will have to go in further. Where the actual piston sits, obviously I haven't done that with anything. That will be probably light wire wall. I need to get that seal out. And I don't know if you can see little bits of rust just around the edges but overall that's come out really well so that is the basic breakdown of the front caliper on a Z650 or KZ650 depending where in the world you are B1 1977 so I'll get the parts ordered and then we can start I can obviously get it painted in between I'll show you that as well and get it reassembled. The other thing I was looking at while I was actually doing the ultrasonic cleaning was obviously starting to look at the disc. Obviously you can see the rust, that's the state of it. Right, I've done just that section. So that's going to clean up quite nice. Again, the center will be painted but as you can see there's a lot to do so I'll keep you filled in on that but that looks promising that it's coming up well did a bit of the inner room as well so right so thanks for joining me on that one I'll say that went quite well um, I just want to do this basically in stages I say there's a lot of prep work in between but I'm pleased that that the actual caliper came apart Looks so like it just needs a lot of cleaning up inside. Same with the bracket. And then I can get paint on them. But no, that came out really well in the, in the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, I'll get the new parts ordered. So hopefully they shouldn't take too long. Uh, we'll get this painted. And then we'll start reassembly. And just take it step by step. The next episode... I'll tell you, I have to do this in stage. I actually want to do these in stages. So it actually gives people uh, a complete guide on just one particular video for one particular pro uh, part of the project. As I said before, I can't reiterate enough. This is my first time. This is not a how-to. Uh, I'm reading the manual. I'm doing the best I can. As I, I'm using, obviously I'm printing out fish uh, pictures which is helping me with the breakdown, how it goes together, how it comes apart. Anybody trying this for the first time, I'd advise exactly the same thing. Next one, so again, we need to take that apart. So that's going to be interesting. Run this, strip this down, clean it up, run it through the ultrasonic cleaner. But this is solid. This hasn't moved for years. So that'll be an interesting one, but that'll be the next episode. Last thing I wanted to say was a big thank you. I know I can't say thank you enough to everybody, but a big thank you to, I hope I get your name right, Rui from the Kawasaki KZ650 stroke Z650 76 to 83 club on, it's a forum on Facebook. I'll leave a link in the description below. Go check it out. It, it's so helpful. Um, I really appreciate all the help and support I've had from that group. You can bounce ideas off of people. There's uh, sort of three, three and a half thousand members, which is, which is great. They gave me a big shout out on their forum, which is fantastic. So thank you very much. But as I say, link in the description. Go check it out. Also, the other one that uh, I do tend to pop up on occasionally is Old Cool Kawasaki. Another great little forum. Again link in the description but as I say the main one is the the KZ 650 stroke Z 650 but it is purely 76 to 83 so go check them out so that just about wraps this one up so uh, as usual subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner so please like and subscribe it is important to me it is important to my channel we are I am growing and uh, it is phenomenal as you saw from a, a couple of episodes ago I'm really really happy Links to other videos top left and top right and join me again next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.